Have you ever felt intimidated by VFX and animation production tools? Or confused by 3D animation software that's so complex that it sucks the joy out of your creative process? Well, I have. For years, it seemed like to create animation, I needed to be more of a technician than an artist. Trying to mount a CG animated production sustainably is complex and overly challenging and just not fun, especially for indies. But thankfully, that's starting to change for artists and creatives everywhere. Hi, I'm Rafi. I work in Story. I'm an independent showrunner, executive producer, and creative entertainment executive. I originate and develop stories for animation and live action and help tech companies bring meaning to their amazing technology through character-driven storytelling. I also help traditional media and entertainment studios advance their storytelling and production capabilities with XR, real-time, and virtual production. Right now, I'm making a scripted, animated show for children, featuring vibrant characters who solve problems through the power of art. The show is called Art Squad, and in this FMX session, I'm delighted to share some of my creative process. I'm making Art Squad for children aged 6 to 8. I don't have a crew. I'm doing it mostly on my own. And if I'm honest, I'm still figuring out how to even do it. You see, I'm not a 3D modeler, nor am I a VFX artist, not by any stretch. But I do love to draw, often characters and stories in my head. Stuff around the house, my desk, or moments at home. Of all the ways humans visualize ideas, I find working on paper the least uncomfortable. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that I'm not a TD. I'm not adept at CG production pipelines. I have worked on many productions in my career, but I was directing actors, and my crew was filled with genuinely talented artists and specialists who brought their expertise in VFX. My focus has always been character, storytelling, and world building. I explore my ideas for visual storytelling and convey the vision through drawings. So embarking on making a CG animated show without a crew is a bit daunting but I'm discovering ways to overcome my limitations in this space with the help of real-time tech. For instance, NVIDIA Omniverse, USD, and Unreal Engine are the backbone of my production process because I can review results and make changes in real time. Designing 3D character models in VR makes pre-production and look dev possible for me. I'm also taking advantage of common virtual production techniques like immersive scene layout, virtual cameras, and motion capture so I can be more spontaneous. Here's the thing, I'm just a storyteller trying to realize a world for my characters to inhabit. Art Squad is set in a junior school art classroom where art materials, objects, and equipment form a lively neighborhood, a colorful community of budding artists. This is an animated maker show for kids. The stories have themes of recycling, repurposing, and sustainability. I want the talent I work with to enjoy a sustainable creative and production process too. The characters in the show represent a kid-friendly, holistic approach to art and creativity. Now let's meet the squad. Artina, the leader, is an art history buff who brings a wealth of knowledge and insight to the group. She's a skilled researcher and often brings historical context to the squad's creative projects. Rivette inspires by demonstrating art techniques and is always looking for new ways to express her creativity. She has a keen eye for detail and a passion for experimenting with different mediums. 3D is a kind and compassionate individual who uses art therapy as a means of promoting well-being, healing, and uncovering underlying feelings or concerns plaguing the squad. She is passionate about the transformative power of creativity and believes in making space for everyone to explore their emotions and express themselves freely through art. Then there's the youngest member of the squad, Figgy, whose spontaneous performance art inspires others to push boundaries and embrace their own unique voices. Pup Pup is a lovable and playful character who serves as the class pet. Made entirely out of putty erasers, Pup Pup is incredibly expressive and animated, with a boundless energy that is infectious. He has a knack for bringing people together and is beloved by everyone. As a wooden hand manner can come to life, Handel is always on hand to help make things happen. 
He is the ultimate roadie, working tirelessly behind the scenes to ensure that everything runs smoothly for the squad. Here's my elevator pitch. Best friends Artina and Rivette love to express themselves through music, drawing, painting, dressing up, and performing. They go on adventures with their friends Putt Pup and Handel, 3D and Figgy. They use the power of art to solve problems and better understand their world. Learning empathy and social awareness brings out the best version of themselves and the solutions they create. They are Art Squad. They make it better with art. You know, most entertainment executives I've endured over the years start off every pitch meeting by saying they don't have time for a pitch. So developing IP after IP at studios has kind of trained me to distill a creative concept into a one pager uh, like the one you see here. So the log line is, it's a scripted animated show uh, with vibrant characters who, who solve problems through the power of art. And the themes uh, are basically adventures that the art squad go on that help children aged six to eight build confidence and self-expression in their own art. And it's also helpful to outline a narrative structure in one pages like this. So in every episode, the squad combine art therapy, art history, and art technique to better understand uh, the world around them. And then laying out a sort of a uh, primary format and secondary format really helps me kind of uh, quantify the kind of content I need to deliver. So uh, the idea is for it to be a daily drop every week um, for five days a week at five minutes long each, uh, and then a monthly drop of a 30 minute live show. And then the secondary format is to deliver uh, tracks on Spotify and TikTok as well as Instagram. So, you know, that's about 20 to 30 hours of original material every year. And that's a, a lot for any studio, let alone an indie like me. But uh, that's the reality of creating a show today, especially if you're trying to find an audience on YouTube. In my mind, any production is like three big land masses, creative vision, production limitations, and business reality. And these land masses are all drifting apart all the time. My main challenge is holding them close enough together to make that happy place in the middle. See that smiley face? And when I was trying to figure out Art Squad, I quickly realized that established production methods weren't going to work for me. I needed an alternate approach to producing high quality CG animated content at you know the volume that uh, I just outlined previously. So why is it that I need an alternate approach? Well, we're all familiar with this waterfall production model. Everything flows in one direction and understandably, making changes downstream is a destructive process resulting in the undoing and redoing of earlier work, which causes a sort of domino effect back downstream again. So, you know, from the left, if you were working on your story reel and you went into animatic and layout and all see and you go through the iterations and all seems fine, then you go into camera and it's still all looking good. When you start getting into animation, you might realize, oh no, you know what? This layout could really do with a rethink. Fine, well, you have to go back up there and all the dependables there are kind of either held up or have to change as well to accommodate a change uh, downstream. And the same would go for modeling and rigging um, or, or lighting, for example. You might find that actually lighting the scene isn't the problem. It's the camera or the, um, the character models themselves that need changing and it's not the lighting. So this is a really challenging situation for any studio trying to meet the ever increasing demand of content in today's market. This might've been okay in the 20th century, but really now um, it, it doesn't scale. Ironically, you know, 3D and CG production is full of assets that are in theory quite versatile and that versatility can fuel a variety of content formats. But the way we've been doing it could be way more artist friendly, more nimble uh, to the realities of production and more scalable. So on the left, we see individual workflows, individual pipelines for different uh, media that are all produced with very similar technology, you know, 3D models and you know, uh, scene layouts and what have you. Whether you're doing a mobile AR game or a mixed reality experience, or if you're doing a, a VR experience or printing models uh, in physical form or doing flat screen video as I'm doing with Art Squad. If they're all a CG uh, based production, 
um, there's lots in theory that could be shared between them, which would make them a, a very scalable production. But these are all very siloed processes that don't play nicely with each other. Finding a scalable way of um, delivering on multiple formats is really important for every entertainment business that wants to adapt to this fast-changing um, environment, you know, these market conditions that continue to change. And you really want to, as a business, seize new opportunities for revenue streams and unlock the transmedia potential uh, of your IP. And that's that's what we're talking about here. This is a transmedia approach because the content landscape uh, is, is not short on, you know, channels through which audiences want to be entertained, be it a game or a live stream or interactive uh, 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 animation and so on. And um, these pipelines that we've been talking about, the waterfall approach, they're optimized for a single specific format, one of those formats, not many. Um, But audiences really, really expect content to be tailored to their preferred format. In other words, you don't want to just clip out a bit from your animated um, series and put it up on TikTok and expect it to engage the audiences. You really want those characters to do something unique on TikTok. And that's just not going to be possible with the um, existing way of working. The established workflows need you to recreate those assets each time. So that's just too damn hard, costly and complex for an indie like me. I'll break. For me, the biggest pain point is finding an intuitive way to make the show that delivers my creative vision within the limits of my production capabilities and is sustainable given the demands of the audience and the business reality of today's content landscape. My earliest exploration was in Quill, a VR drawing and painting app. I didn't start with Art Squad. I went for something smaller. I tried to interpret one of my comic books into 3D animation using Quill. Here in VR, I'm creating a tree in the same amount of time it takes me to draw a tree on paper, but it's a 3D model. I can look around it and shoot it from any angle. So this seemed really promising, especially as I was using my hand as if I was inking a drawing, except I was drawing through space. For this character, I used my original hand-drawn artwork that you see on the left as reference, and drew a 3D version using the same process as that tree. These might look like solid forms, but there are actually lots of individual brush strokes that Quill renders this way within Quill's own uh, in-app renderer. They're still drawings, they're just spatial drawings perhaps. So visualizing in Quill enabled an artist like me to explore my drawings in three dimensions much quicker than I could with the established CG pipelines of Maya and Blender. On the left here is a a concept art for a a cauldron, and on the right hand side you can see an animated version of that cauldron, again done in Quill, which is a lot of fun, you know, creating an animated piece of concept art like this uh, for a show, um, that means that 2D artists can contribute, uh, you know, very rich, meaningful 3D scenes to uh, the productions. It doesn't take anything away from 3D modelers, it just makes the communication clearer. So Quill also unlocks the opportunity to retain the concept artist's hand, their unique visual style, further through the process. Here's an animatic I created in Quill. As you know, the purpose of an animatic is usually to determine the essential storytelling moments, sequencing, shot sizes, location and pace of the narrative, maybe the scale and basic performance of the characters too. Because of the accelerated process within VR, I was able to create this from scratch on my own within the first few days of learning Quill. And as you can see, choices on color, lighting, mood and even rough animation are also being made. For concept artists, this opens up new possibilities for pre-visualization and an effective feedback loop with other departments like layout and camera. So if you wanted to, you could use spatial drawings as one-to-one scale reference for modeling production assets, you know, layout and so forth. Creating in VR certainly helps 2D artists expand their palette to 3D 
more comfortably, say, than traditional methods? Well, at least it has for me. And any one of these frames could work well uh, as an illustration in a picture book. But the fact that I can then spin it around, get, get different angles, means my drawing, essentially, my spatial drawing, can go quite far uh, uh, through um, my storytelling process. But sadly, Quill is not the end-to-end -end solution for Art Squad. You see, the creative vision for Art Squad requires a photorealistic world juxtaposed with worlds sprung from fantastically expressive artwork. That concept is best shown through this character, Artina. Artina's superpower is to literally dive into any art book and immerse herself in a world constructed from that artwork. There she meets and speaks to the artist. Obviously, she's based on poseable wooden figures from art class, but she's a kid, as you can see from her proportions. Experiencing the artist's worldview usually helps Artina come up with ideas to solve a problem in real life. That's what she brings to the art squad. She's modeled entirely in VR using Masterpiece Studio Pro. Compared to traditional 3D modeling software, sculpting in VR is a lot easier and quicker. It feels like a natural extension of drawing, a bit like Quill, except here I'm working with virtual clay, not brush strokes. You also get a better understanding of the 3D form because you're immersed in the same virtual space as your creation. Hand tracking in true 3D space also offers way more nuance for an artist than a flat screen interface, say with a keyboard, mouse, or even a stylus. Once I got the hang of the app, amazingly, she was modeled and textured in an hour. That felt really good. This was the first render test. And you know, pretty advanced for a previous asset, I have to say, especially from a, a non-3D specialist. Artina's best friend, Rivette, is gifted at picking up new art techniques, but is missing their emotional intelligence chip. You can count on this lovable robot's attention to detail and to always say the right thing, but in the wrong way. Still, being a bot means Rivette stays calm in any situation, so they've got that going for them too. Rivette loves learning new art making techniques, uh, is the lead guitarist in the band, quite inventive, builds a lot of their instruments, likes costumes, often augments their body with uh, found objects, and that's because Rivette is based on stop motion armatures, you know, the skeleton inside uh, posable puppets uh, in stop motion animation. Uh, Rivette's body parts are a mix of metal and wood, a well loved eraser for a head, pushpin eyes, and a single paperclip spectacle. Again, modeled entirely in VR in the same way as Artina, except a bit more intricate, the immersive grid and alignment tools are essential for modeling machine parts like this. Working in layers helps keep track of things too. I usually stand, you know, stand up in my space when I'm working in VR. My whole body gets involved, which helps me a lot when I'm trying to work out a three-dimensional design, especially as I spin it around and, and try to get into the details. Sculpting Rivette's hair was a lot of fun. The virtual clay felt like playing with Play-Doh, which is handy because that's what it's meant to be made of. Pup Pup is a friendly seal pup made, as I said before, out of kneadable putty eraser. Uh, pup Pup plays tambourine in the band and currently learning to shapeshift, but he can teleport between containers of water, which makes him a great scout for the squad, helping them navigate on their various adventures. Creating organic forms is a real advantage of sculpting in VR. As with real clay, I lay down a rough mass, then shape it. You know, I pull it, flatten it, cut into it, and smooth the edges until I arrive at the design I want. Working in VR takes the guesswork out of rigging too. I simply reach into the figure and place bones exactly where they should go within the form, drawing my skeleton and then moving uh, the bones around to see if the the mesh moves along uh, nicely with it too. I use Substance Painter for texturing. It's a lot like Photoshop, so the learning curve wasn't too bad. It's been fun, mimicking the look and feel of a mass of putty eraser that's been you know, well used and played with, with fingerprints and scratch marks and stuff. Handle is the band's roadie and stagehand. Uh, Handle can move easels and other heavy equipment quite easily, although is a bit of a clumsy acrobat. Um, always ready to help if a bit impulsive. Uh, Handle also controls the lighting and effects at, um, at their gigs. Sometimes I rough in textures in VR. 
It's easier to identify nooks and crannies of a 3D model and investigate the surface details and intersection points. Uh, in the case of Handle, it's a hard surface model, uh, but the joints are all sort of um, slightly overlapping pieces of, of wood. So getting into those details and um, finding the right place to paint uh, the textures uh, is very effective in, in VR. And uh, in this app, in Masterpiece, uh, again, there's a there's a texture library that you can just uh, click and drag and drop onto your model like that to flood the whole mesh if you want, or you can paint you know individual brush brush strokes as well. It's not a replacement for substance, but you know if you're in VR already, you know modeling and rigging your character, um, it's uh, it's really handy to then put on some placeholder textures just to see if um, everything's going to work out fine when you. Um, and take it into your renderer or take it into Substance afterwards. And there's something really nice about working with objects that are meant to be tactile in the animated world and manipulate them in VR as if you were doing it in the real world. I've tried rigging characters in Maya and Blender and, and always end up drawing the skeleton in random places, often way off to the side or far off in the scene, nowhere near the character model. Here, it's much clearer. I literally reach inside the model and draw through it. I found myself aligning my real world hand with this model in VR and connecting with the design requirements that way. In fact, I'm connecting with the 3D CG process like I've never been able to before. And that was quite an exciting thing um, to, to experience for you know, the first time because uh, I never thought um, it would be this rapid for me. So it's a, it's a very promising space using VR as a production tool. Here's a simple test animation to check the joints and geometry move uh, as they should. Figgy uh, is uh, the youngest member of the squad, a harmless monster made out of pencil shavings. A figgy has a heart of gold, but an infant's temperament, so it can be quite a challenge. Um, and Figgy plays keys in the band. A budding performance artist, uh, Figgy is a little creature with a big heart and empathizes deeply with the problems of others. This is a quality undermined by her short attention span and even shorter temper. Prone to tantrums, but easily distracted by a new worthy cause. It's a fun character to work with. You know, the right combination of VR tools with traditional ones has transformed my capabilities in look development. This character is called 3D. She's one of the more abstract character designs made out of squishy, sponge-like knitted blocks. That's because she's the resident art therapist. 3D has a calming influence on the squad. She's also the drummer in the band. Here she is setting up her drum kit. I wanted her to have the charm and simplicity of a handmade toy, the kind of thing that a preschooler would play with. So using this VR app, Tavori, I explored designs the way a child might play with blocks in nursery. Tavori's interface and primitive 3D shapes offer a delightful way to rapidly prototype your design ideas, not to mention playful, grab, place, stack, rearrange, recolor, resize, and reshape, all very intuitively and naturally with direct control in VR, a perfect method for designing this character. The way I model a 3D character is becoming instrumental to achieving my intended design, and ultimately, the feel of the show. A big, squishy, magical being that inspires the squad to have fun, express themselves, and most of all, to just have a go. A 3D hug is always lovely. For the art direction, I want a warm and inviting tone with a tactile feel. The characters have bright personalities and explore their world confidently. A world that represents real props and environments, lit in a way that is expressive but plausible in real life. So why the realistic look? Because I need to contrast it with the stylized art worlds they visit. I use Omniverse to depict the real world and Flair to depict the art worlds. Flair is a plugin for Maya that allows you to transform your 3D scene with any art style you want in real time right there inside Maya's viewport. So you saw the pastel drawing style earlier. I've also explored watercolor on hot press and acrylic on cold press, which I quite like. It's got a real textural quality to it. Chalk on black paper, which is very striking. Uh, it eliminates the face, but I love the figure drawing that way. And then something inspired by Jack Kirby, something cosmic and sort of comic and graphic. Again, when they travel to a world like that, uh, being 
transformed by that art style and that particular technique is kind of key to the plot, as well as things like fine liner drawings or inked drawings where the lines boil and move, or even something soft like uh, layered watercolor brushes with wet edged brushwork, um, or even a combination of a few of these things in a sort of a mixed media and uh, graphic art style. It's a lot of fun to explore because you get to draw directly in the viewport with your stylus. So it's, it sort of feels like you're drawing the, the art style itself, not just generating it. So when the squad isn't traveling through paintings, their adventures tend to take place in school, where the lighting, materials, and texturing is faithful to real life. The classroom isn't mundane. At least I'm trying to make it enticing to represent the wonder and excitement of learning art and making stuff at school. Funnily enough, I'm making the props for the show using bits and bobs, like out of a box of craft materials, the way I might do if I was a, a, a young kid at school, wrapping thread around the pin and pulling it across the board. At one-to-one -one scale here inside Gravity Sketch, it's the size of a full-size guitar, at least how it would be in real life. I can draw a loose line and then tighten things up, making adjustments to the assembled parts that I've uh, pieced together here. Artina custom built her banjo with stuff she found in the art classroom. That's the conceit anyway. Making stuff makes her happy. And the way I made this was frankly a joyful experience. She named this instrument Banjoline. The cherry red bass is a six string wonder with matching pushpin tuning pegs and rubber bands sprung across the body built with a roll of red tape and a popsicle stick. The electric lemon is a six string guitar built with a popsicle stick, bottle cap, pushpin tuning pads, and some thread. The stripped down disco bass is a favorite for slap bass funk. The resonance of those rubber bands against the paint lid is nicely dissipated by the emery board. The butterfly bass is a prototype electro funk instrument made with a popsicle stick and play-doh. Well, of course. Rivette's favorite, the metal moth, is a four string beast featuring a popsicle neck, plastic gem body, play-doh strings, and a whammy bar. Rock on, Rivette, you rock deity, you. Another technique is drawing lines and splines. If you're familiar with Adobe Illustrator or any vector drawing tool that has Bezier curves, it's the same principle, but here it's spatial. Like bending paper clips or creating a wire sculpture, if you've ever worked in, in those mediums. So creating the twists, bends, and contortions are much more intuitive than they would be, say, you know, in Maya with a keyboard and mouse. It makes for a surprisingly satisfying creative process, literally hands-on. Crafting props this way feels like a call to join in, like I'm a participant or character within this fictional world. With the technical barrier considerably lowered for me, I just muck about and make something for the joy of it. That's when I enjoy art the most. This way, I get a sense of immediacy and spontaneity in my CG production process, is quite rewarding, which motivates me to keep going. I often do layouts in VR. We all know virtual production is accelerating live action production. What most interests me, however, is how that same tech can be even more pivotal for the animation industry. Here, I'm using a Vive Pro with Omniverse XR to rapidly explore ways to dress the set. As you can see, moving virtual objects in this set feels a lot like pulling together an art direction mood board or arranging props on a theater stage in the real world, literally set dressing. This grab and place interaction within a virtual set that I can literally walk around in and shoot with a virtual camera makes the pre-production process of layout and set design much more streamlined in my animation pipeline. I'm constantly writing new episodes. The ability to visualize alongside my writing process inspires story ideas and helps me discover new moments of character development. So it's streamlining my design iterations and proving helpful to my story development process. It's great. Essentially, that deepens my empathy with the characters and their world. For this show, I'm striving for character animation with empathy and truth in performance. Her simple humanoid proportions meant I could auto-rig Artina in Masterpiece Studio and then import into Tavori. Tavori is the most fun I've had posing CG characters. You get direct interaction, a lot like a stop motion animator's process, but with a handy undo button. That direct contact is such a wonderful way to connect with the character I'm animating. 
But alas, keyframe animation isn't going to scale for this production. You see, to sustain myself as an indie, I have to feed the beast that is YouTube. So I'm working with performance capture. This rig is affordable and streams motion data straight into Unreal Engine. So you can direct everything in real time on set from blocking to full takes, try camera moves and so on. Iterate quickly with room to experiment. Game engines like this also leave the door open for live interactive formats. So YouTube Live, Twitch, Insta Reels, the kind of stuff I listed as a secondary format. All of those are platforms with revenue streams to potentially support my production. Much like a live action shoot, I get to improvise and experiment in a way that is seldom affordable to animators. Here, I'm using an iPhone to drive character expressions in real time. My characters might have unusual proportions, but the performer's movements can be retargeted in real time. I can experiment with performance choices and explore different takes and options I simply wouldn't have the time to if I only used keyframe animation. I'm essentially adopting virtual production techniques for an animated series, whether capturing on the soundstage or in my home studio, it's a versatile way of working. As we've seen, the cast of characters are fairly diverse. I'm using full body tracking for Artina, Rivet, and 3D. For Figgy and Handle, I'm using mocap suits as a puppeting system, and Pup Pup is a bit of a hybrid. But even though the input is a human being expressing themselves naturally, it's being filtered and distilled into a format that works with these very stylized designs. Um, and it's it's been a, a fascinating experience uh, trying to um, set this thing up and just seeing how these different characters play off each other visually um, in these different setups, even though the actors are, um, you know, all real people uh, performing in real time. Activating Live Link in Maya, Substance, and UE5 populates the set lit and shot in Omniverse Create, which updates in real time when I make changes in any of the apps. Have you ever listened to a live band where every member is improvising on the spot, contributing their bit, yet never playing over the others so everyone just jams in perfect harmony? Hello. Well, great bands do it all the time, like one organic unit with near telepathic communication that keeps every player in sync. What I'm trying to say is that the myriad of 3D apps in my animation pipeline are starting to sync and play together just like a seasoned live act. And that's because I've got USD and Omniverse uh, supporting the whole process. These two innovations effectively enable me to improvise and jam as I create Art Squad. And that constant live state brings the immediacy of working in theater or a live action set to animation and is accelerating my ability to realize this show as an indie creator. So to wrap up the production pipeline, I've learned that creating spatially in VR considerably eases the technical pains of working with 3D software. So it's clearly, as I've shown many times, it's an intuitive user experience with a sort of a shallow learning curve. And it makes technical tools more accessible, stuff like rigging, for example. And it's empowering artists like me to take my 2D skills into 3D and really contribute meaningfully to a production. Uh, and what's more, it really enriches the briefing and review process, mainly because of the turnaround time with real time. Um, but it also means that you can get your ideas out in 3D before you have to bother someone who's an expert at, th at 3D. And that sort of unlocks a deeper feedback loop uh, with stakeholders. In this case, I'm the showrunner, but I can totally see how this would apply to uh, production houses working with clients. And as I say, it speeds up iteration working this way. So this opens the door for visual artists of all disciplines, graphic designers, illustrators, performers, live action directors, to really enter the world of CG animation and storytelling in ways simply not possible before, because it offers a much more native way to interpret and build stuff in 3D. As for creating in real-time engines, instead of a waterfall process, I'm kind of working like this, a series of loops where anything can be updated or swapped out at any point, and I maintain forward momentum. Even voice acting and facial animation can be updated right at the end. You just fire up the phone and get it to replace the facial animation that you've got in there. In fact, I've been doing that quite often where the body animation's in place, but I want a different expression or a different timing. Uh, it's, it's just something you can swap right at the end uh, without it compromising any, any of your renders. A pipeline model like this really enhances spontaneity and collaboration throughout the production process. In essence, 
It's more nimble, versatile, and scalable. It's been such a pleasure sharing my creative process with you. I hope you got something out of it too. Creativity isn't about working for a living, it's about playing for a living. Making Art Squad is such a blast for me because I can create it my way. And if, like me, you're a showrunner looking for a creator-friendly way to make an animated show, I hope I've shown you some sustainable and enjoyable ways to realize your ideas. Thank you.